is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the On My Gardener channel. This is not going to be a long video, I can promise you, because today is my birthday and we're going to go do birthday stuff. But I wanted to get a video out because I love you guys and I want you to know that regardless of if it's my birthday or if the world is ending tomorrow, we are going to have a video Monday and Friday and probably Wednesday. So it's definitely uh, something that I want you all to know that I am here for you and we love you guys and your support. So uh, throw a like up there for at least having a video up on my birthday. Um, that'd be a great birthday present for me. <laughs> so, uh, and it helps the channel out and it helps get this video to people that can use the information. So what I want to talk about today is not going to be very long at all, but it's plants that you never want to start indoors. These are plants that you can grow indoors. We have some of them growing here, in fact, but they're never going to be transplanted. These are going to be growing to full maturity indoors. I'm going to talk about specifically plants that you do not want to start early indoors and transplant outdoors. Because if you want any success at all, and we've done videos on this in the past, but I want to talk about this specifically, that if you want any success at all with root crops um, or some of these other plants that you're going to plant out in the garden, you do not want to start them indoors for many reasons. The primary reason is that they just don't transplant well. Um, another thing is that if they are, if their roots get damaged, well then they won't uh, they they won't do well for you. They'll grow, but they won't do well. And I'm partially I'm alluding to I'm actually uh, kind of hinting to the fact of root crops. Root crops are some huge ones that you do not want to plant uh, indoors and transplant outdoors. It's best to direct sow. And what I mean by that, direct sowing is basically putting your seed in outdoors in its final place that it's going to grow. Much like we're growing carrots and radishes here. They're going to be maturing here in this bed, so we direct sowed those seeds. If you are growing things like carrots, radishes, beets, parsnips, if it's a root crop, you do not want to start it indoors and transplant it out. Also, another thing that is not well transplanted are things that are uh, that are are very large plants things like squash zucchini um, pumpkins you do not want to transplant them indoors and move them outdoors and the reason is because not because they won't do as well but because oftentimes they grow ext well they, they not oftentimes they do grow extremely fast and they grow extremely large and it can be a bit of a hassle for your transplanting, uh, you know, ease of transplanting, and oftentimes you you snap stems and things like that. Uh, that when you're transplanting them outdoors, they can be very easily damaged because they're so large and and unmanageable. And I can't tell you how often I've seen people uh, completely ruin their starts by just trying, you know, to start too much stuff indoors that does not transition well outdoors. So no squash, no zucchini, um, not even really cucumbers. We start all those directly in the ground or we put them in large pots outside um, where, where they're going to have lots of room. If you're starting indoors under lights, it's just not a great idea. They take up way too much space, they grow way too fast. And if you have a freak frost, you have to keep them indoors longer. That's just the longer they're going to get larger and bigger and the more stressed they get. So they just don't do that well. Um, it is best to always direct sow them right into the ground. And the next crop that does not transition well that I thought uh, is worth mentioning because I see it happen a lot is corn. Folks, don't start your corn indoors. Repeat after me and promise me that you will not start your corn indoors. Corn does not transplant well. And I've learned this the hard way. The first year I did corn, I transplanted outdoors and we got absolutely nada, nothing, zilch. In fact, many greenhouses sell corn starts. I don't know why, don't do it. Don't fall for it. Don't even buy the starts from a greenhouse or a garden center. They do not transplant well. And I'm not even sure why, but it is a well-documented, it's a well-documented fact that if you transplant corn for whatever reason, I think it has to do with transplant shock, but I could be wrong, the tran whatever it is, the transplant shock would be my first guess, is what sets the corn back. And what will happen is the fact that you'll get about one or two foot tall corn stalks. Nothing will, f nothing will really fruit on it. If you do, it'll be dinky and small. And it will really just be a waste of space and a waste of your time and a waste of nutrients in the soil. So just don't do it and direct sow it. You'll be far happier. All right, and the final thing that is definitely an optional one, but I would strongly suggest watching are some of our past videos on high-intensity gardening. 
for why this one is a never recommend starting it indoors, and that is lettuce. Lettuce is best direct sown because when you direct sow your lettuce, you can grow high intensity. If you start from starts, it's almost impossible to get the starts close enough to use your space efficiently. Even in little tiny cubes, you just can't get them that close together to make it the, the, the space as efficient as possible. And so in a high intensity garden, it's best to direct sow your things like leafy greens or lettuces because they just do far better. And so I always recommend starting those in the ground, but that is an optional one. You can start those indoors. It won't affect your results at all, but I can say from firsthand experience that direct sowing outdoors is far more efficient if you're doing a high intensity cut and come again style lettuce like we do. And also things uh, that I thought I mentioned, obvious ones, tubers and onion sets, things like that. If they're Right, garlic sets, whatever. You want to put them directly outdoors. Don't start them early indoors and transplant them out. That never ends up well. So those also don't, don't do that either. Um, same thing with like strawberry runners uh, or strawberry plants. They just, just best to put them right in the ground. They just don't, they don't really need to come in and start early. Plus they're, they're usually better transplanted only once to prevent transplant shock. So there you go. There's the plants that you never want to start indoors early. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you are getting your season off and running if you're able to start your seeds or at least keeping something uh, going in the, in the you know indoors to keep your mind occupied. I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you'll learn something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See you on Wednesday. Bye.